So this is the Portland Rotor Bunker. This is a second walkthrough I did with a 3D camera. The 3D camera versions are available in both side-by-side, -side, top and bottom version, and red cyan version. But this is a conversion from 3D back to normal 2D so that everyone else can watch it without needing the glasses. However, I would say watch the big version, which is a lot longer, has graphics and a lot more material mixed in with it. This is just a short tour done in 3D. So thanks very much. Right then, folks, here we are in the Portland bunker in 360. Mm. So here we go. And that's the lift shaft. Oops. Hang on then. That's the lift shaft and the pulley wires on the top. And then you've got the climb down. These ladders were installed, I believe, by English Heritage. So they are fairly modern ladders. And you can see along the wall where the steps would have been. So that would have been the original stairs up at an angle, going across to the right and going up again. So the stairs would have gone all the way around the edge of the room. And there's the, there's the nice view up. And there is the, there's the wiring. And then as we come down from the wiring, you get the amazing, amazing view into the abyss. And this is the abyss which actually goes downhill which is pretty impressive stuff. So let's go and uh, check it out folks. Let's go and check this stuff out. So it's probably about a three degree, three degree, four degree angle down. And you can see all of the pieces here that are basically the same sort of stuff as you'd get in London Underground, these concrete and metal metal plates All these pipes and cables consolidate and looks like they probably would have gone underground at that point. So they would have gone down into the concrete channel down the side so that this bit was kept a little bit cleaner. It doesn't look like the cables went. So they would come from there and again on both sides they would just go down 
and into the concrete along the edges. The, uh, here's the transformer box and here's the big old transformer. And look it's actually on a it's on a rail as well. You see it's got little rollers on the bottom. You see the little rollers left and right? You see those little rollers there and there? So you can roll the transformer back and forth. It might even be that if, if there's an explosion on the surface that it kind of has a bit of give. You know, if there's an explosion that it will actually, you know, maybe just ease out a little bit of the vibrations that would have gone directly into the transformer, maybe destroyed it. But because it's on rollers, it would just sort of slide back and forth a little bit. Here's your door, big old door with its rubber rubber seal still intact. Decommissioned January 2000. I wonder what they did to do the decommissioning. I wonder what was actually involved in the decommissioning. 2000, so that's 22 years ago. Because we're in 2022. So, so here's a water, water pipe that would, would have probably gone up here to a wheel. Water, water um, hoses on the water wheel. A little room in here with oily slime down the walls on the other side. Oil leaching out of something. That's weird. Sounds like I heard um, noises in the vents then. Couldn't be rats down this this low, there's no food down here for them. I wouldn't think they'd be bothered, but it sounded like I heard something over there. And that oil stuff, it's kind of weird. I don't know if I remember seeing that earlier on. Probably did. Wasn't sh I don't remember it shining like it was here. So whether that means something, I don't know. What's this oil, oily stuff on the walls then, folks? Anybody got any idea? I'm pointing at these drippers here, these drips. What's all that about? Yeah, and you've got these boxes here, which I think would have been... Oh, shit. Really? Lights just gone out. I was going to say, bloody lights just gone out. <coughs> Don't do that to me. Not when we start to film. So let's get it done then, folks. This is the big room. It's the big old room, which uh, you get most of the road to bunker. So it'll probably be radar screens in here. Lots of radars. Lots of vents. Lots of noise. And you've got all these connector boxes on the floor, which is where all the radar cabling would have gone in these long trunk cable boxes here. Um, and it goes all the way around the corner and ends up going to a gantry, a viewing gantry, which I'm going to try and get up, but I don't know how we're going to get up there. But there's definitely a there's definitely a way to get up it because in the rooms following you'll see that you can see the gantry looking down. 
So again, another room with a bit of a sump potentially underneath it. And there you can see the edge of the gallery room. So it's going up at an angle. It's going up at an angle, but then above it, there's a walkway around the edge now. That is probably not very safe, but we shall see because we like a challenge. Oh look, there's a hot water boiler. I missed this. And and I also missed the walk walk up to this gantry up here. So oh dear. Right, let's get that head torch on. Let's go for climb. What's up here though folks? Is a gantry. Wow. It's just a walk a walkway on top and an air pump. So let's get up here and we'll show you what's here. It's a bit of an odd, odd space. I've not seen a, a space like this one in uh, these bunkers before. Not like a little gantry like this. It's weird. wonder what would have been up here then. Got a little a little bit of air pumping equipment going on here. But what was the purpose of having this space up here? Just a bit of extra space. Funny, huh? Funny. Wow. It overlooks, overlooks the area into the rooms below. So let's go down and walk further along before we get into the mode of light switches oh I think they could pay the bloody electric bill <laughs> dear dear these bloody bunkers they never pay the electric bill so Lots of the floors all gone here, probably wooden floors in the day, which is rotted through. I'm imagining that's what's going to be the case up here with this in a second. And you can see the balcony here. Can you see the balcony up there that you walk around? It's definitely a balcony. It's definitely a balcony, but, but why? Where do you get up? Is it actually in this room? I'm going to have a quick look around the corner and see if we can see the way up. Let's have a quick look. Ooh, that sump is evil. Oh my god, that's, that sump is so deep. That is really deep. Oh my god, I can see the stairs. There's no way we're getting up there. Do you know why this sump is so deep? That goes down into the abyss. And I know why that goes down into the abyss. I think I do. I think I know why that goes into the abyss. Um, I'm guessing because some of these, some of these rotor bunkers used to have a very deep projection pit. Now I think they've got rid of the they've got rid of the projection pit because the projectors would have been down, right down there projecting upwards so these people on the gantry who are walking around on the gantry would see on this area they would see an image but I think that they've changed it and they've put these I-beams in later they've put these I-beams in later now the because look there's air vents as well that, that kind of proves a point why would they have air vents going down into the abyss going down there into the abyss and it's because all the projectors that were down there which are probably arc projectors probably needed to be cooled. So there's a vent over there in that corner and there's this vent here and you wouldn't have that for a sump would you? You know somebody was meant to climb down into this lower space and operate and service the projectors which were shining up but I think they probably just changed the design of this room so they no longer had the projectors down underneath 
and they just probably had a plotting room or something in here and God knows when this um, when they last used the gantry but um, does the gantry go back around to where I am no it doesn't oops focus there you go focus but those stairs wow those stairs have long disintegrated and I would imagine that because all of this gantry is made out of wood that realistically you wouldn't be able to walk you wouldn't be able to walk there because you'd just fall through so this is a no-go but it definitely is definitely is a balcony gantry room mmm very interesting isn't it so let's get out of here take you somewhere else So now we've got uh, female toilets. Female toilets, and as I said, it looks like there's some sort of fire, maybe in just a, and it smells fire as well. It smells like there's a small localized fire took place in this place. Don't think it got all the way along the bunker, but certainly in this section, you know, let's have a look, see if we can kind of work out what's going on. See, this blackness only goes a certain distance up the wall and you'd expect if it was fire there would be more fire at the top than at the bottom more more smoking and the top doesn't look too bad so it's weird it's weird trying to work out whether there was a fire in here but look at all this look at all this like slime and slime and grime in the lower half what is this folks why would the slime be down lower and it doesn't go up higher. That seems like the reverse of what you'd have with a fire. Does anybody know? Look, the slime is everywhere. It's even on the toilet. It's on the hand basins. It's weird, isn't it? Isn't that strange? And look, just, just so we can show that's how intact this bunker is. That's how good it is. Because the toilet is not smashed. That's probably asbestos lagging on that pipe there on the left hand side, that smaller pipe. Probably asbestos lagging. Mmm. Yeah, so the, the cistern's gone from up there. That would have been where the cistern was. So we've got two different types of lights there. So is that two different colours of light? Or have they just turned dark again? Is that two different colours of light? Maybe one was a emergency warning light and the others were actually just to provide lamp light. Oh look, it says here, it says on the wall, Tammy 2017. Ooh, so people have been in here not that long ago. Now this room has some extra washing stuff. Now this is the canteen, so you can wash your hands and it's got its own set of toilets adjoined to the canteen, which is separated from separated from everything else. And that's the incinerator for feminine femme hygiene products. So that would have been an exhaust going right out to the surface for you know burnt burnt air basically so um the slime on this door that mouldy slime amazing it's like a life life force of all of its own look at it folks just look at that get that in 3d have some of that have some of that in 3d yum yum this is a temperature box, look. Temperature box for the room. And you set the temperature via the spinner at the bottom, which is now stuck. Yeah, but you'd set the set the temperature for here. This is the canteen, so you'd sit down in here, have your food. So it could have been this thing on the wall, it could have been that there were trays, sit trays, um, cupboards, work surfaces along the edge there and it might be that people would serve your food 
through this hatch. So maybe they were making the food in here, making the food in here, and they hand it through this hatch, hand it through the hatch, and then hand it into this right-hand room. So, yeah. Let's check that out then. Find out what it probably was. So yeah, this is the hatch room. Where they would hand out the food, drinks, whatever. So Vince was here in 2017, it says. Hmm. And they've obviously scribbled in that, that nasty, mouldy stuff. So was this the room for the canteen then, or was this where they cooked? This is probably where they ate. So the other room was probably where they cooked, because it's bigger. And this is probably where you ate your food, in this room. So they'd hand it through two hatches to get to you. Interesting. So this, this then might have been a bar, in, in, in a strange way, I imagine that this was probably a bar and they would have probably alcohol in there so they could keep the alcohol from the kitchen staff and they could separate it out um, so the kitchen staff would hand the food through both hatches or bring it round the corner and bring it in. You know, but that's probably why they've got this hatches to keep people from getting their hands on the alcohol. I would imagine. And uh, you've got your vents up here for the uh, eating area. Vents. Right. And here you've got your pump room. Pump uh, for the air, air filtration um, and air cooling. This is your uh, AC. Air conditioning basically and you've got vents relay switches and rheostats to regulate the voltage and current to control the speed of the motors which would in turn control whether or not it was cooler or very chilly in here and they weren't really worried about heating these places because heat was not a problem with the amount of radar equipment and electrics in here I mean that would be producing its own heat so what they were worried about is cooling. It was about cooling these places down. So, yeah, lots of equipment. Let's take a little closer look at some bits of it in 3D so you can get a nice, a nice feel. Yeah. There's a little viewing the import there, so you can inspect probably the oil, the oil on the bearings. So that's for the oil bearings, so you can check it, make sure there was oil. And another one in there probably for, for checking oil. Now there's asbestos in those um, white pipes, so we're not going to touch those. And uh, round the corner into into the uh, into more pumps so pumps pumps and pumps and I imagine this is dual redundancy so you've got one electric motor on the right hand side with a big pump wheel for gear reduction and in case that went out of service they could switch to this pump this pump here and carry on whilst they serviced the other motor and other bands systems so they dual redundancy, so they never would get to a situation where they weren't operational from a air and cooling point of view. So dual redundancy. You have to keep the air flowing down here because, whoops, with people working underground, um, the air getting stale would mean people, uh, people passing out. So there we go, we are down now, back behind the, um, probably water in this, it's probably, don't know, could be water, could be a big old water tank, and more pumps, mini pumps, and a humidifier and chiller unit, which I believe would be in there, would be spraying water, spraying water which was pumped in, and as it came through, it would have the air would be passed through it, which would then chill, chill the air by condensation uh, 
you know, taking the heat out of the air with the water and it would also reduce the uh, particulates in the air as well and there's the filters there's the air filter system and uh, we can probably see in a little bit hopefully that looks nice in 3D Go and have a look at some of the other bits. So here we've got the uh, we've got your common and garden bus bars for red phase green phase or yellow, red, yellow and blue and neg, negative so this is the multiple phases coming in and uh, you've got your switch gear, multiple switches and all of the phases going off down, down along the bus bars so you've got the all the, all the power would come in through here and it would have been showing you on this box where the power was coming in, whether it was coming in from the main supply outside or from your backup supply which was down here it tells you how many amps you're using and look at the, the metering here, like I mean 600 amps 600 amps, 800 amps maximum so that's, that's what the meter can show you, imagine 400 volts, 800 amps so let's do the maths right 400 times 800 so what would that be so let's say let's say um, uh, 4 times 8 so 8 16 and so it'll be a bloody hell 1.6 megawatts is it 400 times 800 megawatts oh god anyway you, you do the math that's a lot of power so we've got a lot of the switch gear here switch gears and wires now we've got more switch gear here Start and stop, it says. So, this is a uh, control system. Control system for the. Uh, and we've got 500 cycles, number one, 500 cycles, number two. Machine starter selection switch. So, I think you've got dual backup here as well. It's Allen and West made this equipment from Brighton. Allen and West. So this would probably be which motor room you select. So you select which power goes to the motor room. Now this is wooden floor as well, but you've got um, generators here, and these might be um, reduction generators to reduce the power, because what they used to do in the old days is they used to take the power at one one speed and one phase and one hertz and they would generate other power at other hertz and it might be because some of the equipment might not have been built in the UK it's possible because these look like generators these are generators so what they do is they spin a motor on one side and produce electric at a different voltage out of the other side and it could be because it was they just had a very different need for a different voltage different hertz rate on the voltage and that's why they've got these um, switches, switcher motors so let's, I'm tempted to pop in and have a quick look actually because uh, I haven't done it on, on the other one but to be careful because this is wood floor and we don't know we don't know what the deal is but yeah, there's your motors there's your motors and here's your generators so that's your generator on one side and I think that's your motor on the other side 
and that little that little thing at the top is a starter motor so because these motors don't like to start on three phase they don't like to get into to starting very well what they would do is they use a little starter motor just to start spinning the bigger motor so they spin the motor up and then they kick it in so it's a starter motor not like you get in a car but sort of similar principle it's just because the these these motors they they need a little bit of turn to kind of get them going because otherwise they sort of bounce they go and they bounce back and forth so you've got to kind of flick them sort of like ing and start them rolling and then and then they'll start up to speed if you don't do that you'll end up just leaving the motor in one position and it'll burn out so circuit one circuit two start so circuit start circuit on both of these and there so there's two so there's redundancy again so they've got two generators so if one dies and one needs to be serviced they can switch one out switch one in and wow you've got you've got switch gear up here look at the size of these cables the size of those bloody cables that there. Bzzz, bzzz. Yeah. And that's that's interesting. Look, milliampers. Why milliampers? At 180 volts. Maybe it's because you had to do a calculation to work out what the major ampage would be. So you know this this is not designed for the correct scale. So maybe it just does a small deviation here, and then you have to calculate yourself. And look at this, look at this little, oh wow, look at that, look at that, there's a little needle look. What's that about? That's a rheostat. Maybe to trim this. Maybe to trim it. I'm sorry, you weren't looking at that then. Look at this here, folks. There's a little needle on it, look how fragile that needle is. Look how fragile it is. Wow, just fuses. Here we are, look. Office Master Trigger Supply. Oh, look, Radar Office Master Trigger Supply. Radar Office Master Trigger Supply. Isn't that cool? Look, and Type 54 is the type of radar. Type 54 is the name given to the radar. So that's the Type 54 radar, and that's the radar office. So you've got the radars are operated from here, so the spinning heads on the radars or whatever, and the screens, that's that. So it might be because they just needed a very high voltage perhaps, you know, going to those radar heads. They might have needed a high voltage because of, um, because of the way they were producing the, the radio frequencies. So this could have been ra the radio gear, the radio transmitter gear in here. Look at this, 660 volts, folks. 660 volts, 300 amps. Wow. 660 volts. They, they should have made it 666, really, shouldn't they? Wow. So, here you go. Lots of nice fuses. You don't really want to play with any of these because they've probably got asbestos in them. So, uh, but look at these uh, generators. The size on the back of this generator. Look at it. Yeah, I think it's got to be something to do with um, stepping up or stepping down the voltages to to either crazy high voltage or something else. Like you know, most mains works at 200, 220, 400 volts, but maybe this radar equipment needed a thousand volts. You know, maybe it needed a thousand volts or or a couple of thousand volts, and it was just easier to generate that than, than transform it. You know, a bit like they do with lifts. Surprisingly, they do this with lifts. They take mains power in, and then they transform it through a generator into the voltage they want for the lifts. You'd think they'd just use a transformer, but, you know, maybe there's reasons why that I don't understand. You can tell us in the comments if you know. I know they do it, but I don't know why they do it. 
because as I say transformers would do the job why do they have to actually have a spinning generator to do it so maybe you can fill us in folks if you know stuff about this and want to come on the show and tell us here's the vents vent pump supply from outside so this this is why they keep this room sealed because this is on the air supply side so they keep this room yeah keep this room separated out so there we go and then we've got the uh, got another filter and we've got the emergency escape which we can't really go back up because it's a bit dodgy that ladder I'm not not 100% on that we did try it earlier on with a big camera but I'm not going up it again so more vent fans and again dual redundancy so if this one breaks down you have a spare because they can't afford to take chances in a place like this they, they, they have to keep running they can't evacuate the staff just because the fans have gone off they need to keep it running so everything has to have a dual redundant backup and there's a sump with a compressor or a pump. Could be a sump pump, could be a compressor. I think it's actually a water pump. That, got a funny feeling that is a water pump somehow. I don't know how it works. So, yeah. And the sump is off the edge, yeah. Sump is over the edge. The sump is down there. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at where the stairs would have been then. So on the wall you can see, the stairs would have gone up and around, and they would have actually gone into this space. It wouldn't have touched these wires on the side, it would have gone up in a square spiral. Square spiral, going all the way up, and then it goes up to the next floor. So you can see where the bracing would have been on the wall, and it goes up and over over there and then it goes up an even higher distance on the other side it's quite a large chamber it's two or three times as high as this one going down the corridor so two ways in you know this way was a spiral staircase way in and probably went to one of those long slanted walks as well like we've seen and the other end had the lift shaft so it had a lift down as well See where all these cables would have come in, and again, the cables would have gone down into into the floor space to go along. You can see the leftover remnants of uh, where the cables were chopped off there. So there we go. So we're all. I think we're good to go, folks. I think we're good to go. So they've obviously had a, a third ladder. It might have been for that other end so they, because they definitely would have needed a taller ladder to get all the way down there this Steve Griff 1975 Wow that would have been when the bunker still had a lot of stuff in it somebody managed to get in here and do some graffiti in 1975 but it probably wasn't in use but it still had a lot of stuff in it
Right, so we've been down here now for three hours, <laughs> all told. These sorts of pipe chambers and walkways remind me of things you'd have in nuclear nuclear silos. Very reminiscent of uh, walkways you see in those sorts of silos. I'm going to have a rest and then I'm going to do some 360 photos, do a few, and then we might be heading on our way. Here we go. Thank you for watching the 360. One last look up the, up the hole.